In this video, I want to talk a little bit about some of the options in the uh, reuse object spreadsheet <laughs> to, uh, to drive some of the variability in a reuse object. Uh, if you've not noticed them inside the reuse library near the top here, generally there's a, a reuse object library example only that's out of the box that contains a bunch of examples of these. And uh, th these are a lot like a user-defined feature, some nuances there. I won't get into the differences in the construction right now, but, uh, but I wanted to show you a couple things with these. Um, I'm gonna grab, use this cross boss here in as, as an example. This, if we drag it out into our model, we get this material added to the, to the part here. You get this user interface that's uh, automatically generated here. There's a bitmap that we'll talk about in just a second. And uh, in the detail parameters here, this, this area right here is the part that I want to talk about here today. Um, you'll notice that this top one here with the little green arrow is an option menu. And as we change this, this D, this diameter of the boss on the top here, uh, that the parameters down below are all going to adjust. So, so as we change just this diameter right here from one to two to four, some options predefined in here you see, you'll notice that all the rest of these values down here change. And of course the size of this is getting quite a bit bigger. So we've got an 8343 right here, 0 0.4. Uh, as we change that to four here, you'll notice that that 8343 is, is gone, right? And all, all of those have followed along. Um, we can come in here, let's go back to the middle one here for a minute. We can come in here with these and uh, you'll notice there's a little unlocked icon here on the left for these. We can come in and edit one of these individually here for instance and say we want this one to be 10 and uh, we want this one here to be 2 and, and we can do that kind of editing to these directly as well right now. Okay, now. I had a question come up today about uh, whether we could lock these in various ways. If we could preemptively lock these or even hide these entirely from this UI. And it turns out we can. <laughs> Talked with the developers today and, and they, they told me about this uh, this thing. And now that they mention it, I, I've, I've seen it in there and I didn't realize what it was. So I want to describe this to you because it's pretty cool. So I'm going to cancel this one and uh, I made took that very same boss and made a, a copy of it down here and turned it into a cross boss example. And uh, so I'm going to use this one down here to, uh, to illustrate this. So this one right now is in that same state as before. And this edit database right here button will launch Excel with uh, the spreadsheet that's used to define this variability. And there's some cool things that you can do in that spreadsheet. Uh, this one again is in that same state here where there's an option menu at the top and as we change that one option at the top the rest of the options down below here are coming along for the ride and uh, and so let's let's take a look at this i'm going to cancel this and uh, switch over to excel and we'll see the excel spreadsheet that goes along with this so this is crossfoss example looking at this on disk actually uh, you'll see this triplet here a lot right where we'll have a part file, there's a bitmap that goes along with that, and then the spreadsheet that kind of is the, the glue that holds the whole thing together. Um, in the spreadsheet here, of course, it's referring to the bitmap, right? So this is where we'll specify that bitmap. And that, of course, uh, in NX is, is the bitmap that's gonna show up there in the legend at the top, right? Uh, which it didn't here, so I've done something wrong. <laughs> but I'll figure that out. Um, at any rate, the... Uh, uh, I'm really, I'm really curious why that's not, why that's not coming up. Oh, I've got an extra. When I, when I renamed my, my bitmap, I put an extra underscore in there. There we go. So if I name that correctly, I'll bet that'll come up now. <laughs> uh, actually, let me. I don't know if I need to refresh that. That, that I don't it didn't change anything in the spreadsheet there, but let's try that way. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> that's good. So that was a happy accident. Um, so, so yeah, getting that, that bitmap identified in the spreadsheet there will. Uh, we'll bring up that legend image right there. If it's present, you see it shows up. If it if it doesn't find it, then it just doesn't show it. Um, down here, this is the part that I wanted to uh, wanted to show, and and this is pretty interesting. So, uh, the thing the developers talked about. Um, let, let's let's do this first. Some some variability things down here. This is a really interesting spreadsheet. And the way this is formulated is uh, is to to allow you to define multiple options in here but do so in a kind of sparse way. Uh, and this is, this is clever. So for instance, uh, with our, e each of these rows right now is a variant of the model, of course. Um, so row six here, if we choose one in that first 
that first top control, then, then it will set the rest of these as part of that, that action. Uh, similarly, if we do that with two or four, right, if we take these out, uh, we've got kind of three options here that, that the spreadsheet will offer uh, in this particular case. Now what we can do here is, uh, I don't want to change the height, sorry, I'm going to insert some rows there, is we can add some other options in here and we can do so sparsely like this. So here we've got one option for the model that's row one here, that's where the boss diameter is one, and that'll, that'll do all of these values. Um, if we choose two, then, then we're going to have some variation available for the second parameter, which is pretty cool. And this does kind of cascade from, from left to right here as we, as we populate these. Um, so, so in this case here, again, with just with two, we'll have some options for, the, for this rib width. Uh, with four, we won't, and with one, we won't. Okay, so let's try that. We save that and then go back to NX here. I'm going to refresh this this folder to get the new version of that. And, uh, and now when we drag this out, we'll get, uh, you see, with one, we, we don't have the options below here. If we choose two now, now you see the width here has our 8, 10, and 12 available that were our three that were available in the spreadsheet there. And of course, if we go to four here, then that variability goes away and we've got that last variant available there. So that's pretty cool, right? So that's, that's again, offer, offering uh, options uh, within kind of one of the options here. And, and we can actually cascade that even further. For instance, if we wanted to say uh, here relative to 12, uh, let's just insert a couple rows there. And uh, here relative to 12, if we wanted to say this could be um, say four, uh, five or uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's let's say yeah, four, five or six like that, right? So now with the ten option, we've got a few options for the for the H one down here. Okay, that would uh, that would work. Uh, actually, just for fun, let's put those here, right? We'll do four and five and, and get rid of that one. Okay, there we go. So so now we've got kind of a, a just a nice a nice set of ribs there. So so if we're on eight or, or sorry, if we're on if we're on one here, we've got that one option. If we're on two, now we've got options for eight, ten, and twelve. And if we're on ten, then we've got this this third level here available, right? So let's try that. So we'll save that, go back to NX, we'll refresh over here, and uh, and as we drag this one out now, we should see that kind of three level interaction, which is pretty cool. So with one here, if we go to two, we get the, the width interaction. Uh, T is not yet a, an option menu, right? But if we come and choose 10 here, then this one now gives us the four and five options there, right? So that's that's pretty cool. Now, that, that much that much is, is that. Um, the, the thing, again, the main question was about visibility and, and controlling locking maybe some of these others. And, and so that's what I want to do here now. I'm going to undo that again. Let's come back to the spreadsheet. Um, one thing out here on the end that is, is cool is this also this ability to set the feature name out here. And, and actually, let's go back into NX. You'll notice this is doing a cross-boss test, and it's going to feed in that, that boss D over here expression and the rib W expression and, and use those as part of the feature name out there. And we'll see that here really quickly. We take that on, uh, out there and choose, for instance, uh, here, say this one and 10. So we've got a 2 and 10 right here now. As uh, so we say OK, and that goes into the model, we'll see in the history here that this, this 2 and 10 get added into the, the feature name here, which is pretty, pretty cool. Um, you'll also notice that that doesn't show up in the dialog here at all. As we go to instantiate this, um, that that parameter is not showing up in this list at all, right? And and the thing I hadn't noticed before, but but now that I talked to the developer, I see what it's doing. That hashtag, the pound sign right there, is actually doing that. That's making that not show up, which is kind of interesting. So for instance, with this draft angle, if we want that draft angle to not show up in the dialog, it can still vary like this. Right? But if we want it to not show up in the dialog, then we can add that pound sign at the beginning. 
and and that bottom control that draft angle there will just not show up you know, the next time we do this okay so for instance let's save that one come back over here to NX let's refresh here and uh, and as we come out here and and do this uh, we've got our list but we don't have draft draft angle anymore down here and uh, and I suspect if we square that up and zoom up on it a bit we might be able to see this work <laughs> that might be too subtle but let's uh, let's give it a try so if we go there from one to say that one yeah it's subtle maybe we can't quite see it but that's okay um, what we can do is measure it right so we could come in here and we could measure the angle here between that plane and that plane right there and that's going to tell us it's 91 and a half right so we've got one and a half degrees of draft there and that of course is what we'd expect in the second one so the variation is happening here but uh, but we're not uh, we're not seeing that control in the dialogue at all so so again the the pound sign right is going to do that that's going to hide that control allow the variability but not not include that in the uh, in the dialogue um, the second thing we could do here uh, is to put an asterisk next to one of these and that means something too <laughs> so for this boss R, the, the R as it shows up in the dialogue here, with one asterisk, what we'll see, let's come back out here and let's just take care of both of those and delete both of those. Yep. There we go. Let's come back to the Reuse Library and we'll refresh here. And as we put this one out here now, you'll notice that the R down here now is locked, right? And that one has the lock on it. It's visible, but it has the lock on it. And we can click on that lock and we can unlock it, right? But but that single asterisk, one asterisk here, will preemptively lock that control so that as we try to double click over here and edit that one, we can edit these that are unlocked, right? But but we can't edit this one unless we unlock it. And then we can come over and we can can uh, edit that one. Okay? So that's the, the one asterisk behavior. And, and the fact that I've been saying one may lead you to the, the fact that there's a two asterisk variant of this as well. <laughs> so this H2 boss now, we've put the two asterisks on. And the two asterisks, as you might guess, is related to the other lock. So this one here, if we re refresh again, bring this out. With the H, uh, the H2 here now, you'll notice that there's not a lock icon on this one at all. And, and this one now is just not editable at all. So if we want to include it here in the dialog, it's visible. We can see it happening. As we make a change up here, for instance, we can observe that that H2 is going to change. Um, but, but we can't edit that H2. It's fully controlled now by the, by the option up here with D. That's uh, another possibility there. Okay. So again, we've got, uh, we've got the pound sign or the hashtag here on the draft angle, we'll hide it completely. You see the draft angle is gone. Uh, the one asterisk here will will preemptively lock it, initially lock it when we bring up the dialog here. The two asterisks here will will permanently lock it in the dialog. Again, the variability can still happen, but but it's fully locked in the dialog. So as you do these kinds of, of reuse objects, you can use this to control which options are available, which options are not available, which things are visible and not visible, uh, even as you include the variability in the spreadsheet there. Okay, so that was new to me today. That's really cool, and I uh, thought I'd share that with you, and I hope that's useful to you.